to the Book Doctor's YouTube channel. A very special guest today. Today, we have Paige Edmonds, who is the associate publisher of Workman Publishing, the amazing publishing house that published our book, The Essential Guide to Getting Your Book Published, and other books of We think well. pound for pound the best publisher <laughs> in the universe. We think so, too. <laughs> and they think so, too. So, one of the big questions that we get all the time is what is a publisher? Like, what is a publishing house? How does right. that differentiate in this world where we now have self-publishing, right. right. hybrid publishing? Right. Right. Independent All publishers, right. yes. big five publishers. Right. It's very confusing. And it's interesting because the answer isn't probably that different than it would have been some years ago, even mm -hmm. though the landscape of publishing okay. has changed a lot. Uh, I would define a publisher as a company that uh, puts books out into the world. Okay. And certainly, yes, a self-published author can put their book out into the world, but what you're getting with a publisher is a line of resources from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So at a, a publishing company acquires a book and an author works with an editor on the entire book. What do we want this to actually say? What's the table of contents? What's the writing like? What's the design like? What's the art budget? What's the photography? What is the cover? Mm -hmm. So we do all of that pre-publication creating of the book along with the author as our partner. Okay. And then really importantly, one of the big jobs of the publisher is to then get the book out in the world. Okay. So that's both through marketing and publicity and also importantly through sales. Mm -hmm. Some publishers have sales reps who work only for that publisher. Mm -hmm. Some publishers have sales reps who work for a bunch of different publishers, but these are the people who are out in the retailers, pitching that book and saying, here's what it is and why you need it. Yep. Uh, and it goes from there. We also then warehouse and continue to ship and take orders and live the long life of the book. And you guys are an independent publisher. We are. Fiercely, not, proudly. Not yeah. owned by a larger right. corporate entity. Right. Right. And we, um, in, in almost all of our workshops that we give, mm -hmm. we ask people at the beginning, who here wants to have an agent and be published by the big five? Right. They all raise and their hands. And everybody raises their hands. Their hands. And we by say, the time we're done, we ask the same question. Who wants to be published by an independent publisher? They oh, all raise their hands. Oh, you have such an agenda. Hands. Yeah. I would say, a pub, you know, there are this huge range of publishers. And the reality is that 20 years ago, the big five was many more. Yes. So just all been brought up together. Yeah. So, you know, there's really good work being done there by really yeah. smart people. There are, of course. You Absolutely. know, there's not a... a well, maybe there are maybe upsides and downsides in both directions. Yeah, but the work that's being done is the same. In mm -hmm. fact, the Big Five have huge resources yeah. that some of the smaller publishers don't. Yeah. I right. think the joy of being an independent publisher is that we can make decisions that aren't all driven by the bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can stick with the book a little bit longer. I think one of the real frustrations in the on the publishing side these days is that there's so many books coming out, and most people who work at publishers are under so much pressure to get on to the next thing. Yes. That they can't, they may not feel they have the luxury to wait, wait, this book is taking, let's give it a few more weeks and let's keep pushing some marketing out there. They sort of have to move on to the next. And it's one of the things, as an independent, smaller publisher, that we really take pride in is that we're going to stick with that book for a while. Because it doesn't always. The match doesn't, doesn't always strike in that very exactly. first batch. It sometimes yeah. takes a little while. Well, one of the interesting things for I think for for uh, writers to know about is uh, you know Harper Collins publishes five thousand books a year. How many books do you guys right, publish? Right, right. You know we're a collection of seven imprints, and the, our biggest imprint, which is Workman, we're now publishing more than we used to, but we're publishing maybe between sixty and eighty books a year. So Sixty and eighty, smaller. five thousand. Right. right. That said, we have a lot fewer people working on them. Uh, right. Maybe more pound for pound in a marketing department right. than right. you know people per book. Uh, but also, it's also the way we do it. As an independent publisher, as opposed to a big five publisher, is that you guys have a more specified list. Each imprint does something right. that's very specific. Right. Um, and and that has its advantages as well. I think it does. I think one of the things that must be difficult at an imprint within the big five is why your imprint should publish it versus your neighboring imprint, which yeah. might be really similar. Right. Uh, in a smaller company, we are more carefully defined. You know, we have one group that does fiction. We have one group that does uh, books for country living. We have one group that does lifestyle books, including more illustrated. That said, even 
I would say in the last decade, those lines begin to blur sure. a little. Yeah. Uh, so there's, it doesn't mean we're without our own inner competition of, wait, right. I wanted that one. Uh, <laughs> or that's a little close to something that we're acquiring. Let's be careful there. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So if, if you're a, a writer yeah. out there um, uh, and you want to get your book published right. by Workman, right. what do you, when the, the, the queries come in to you, how does, how does that work from your end? Uh, queries come in to our general editorial group yeah. and certainly to specific editors if there's a connection to the person or if an agent does this. Uh, and I know that's one of the big challenges is if I want to get a publisher, I have to get an agent first. How do I do that? And you all probably know that better than yes. I do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, many publishers no longer take unsolicited manuscript solicitations. We will take them. It's challenging. It's hard to rise out of that pile and, and understand it. I think that's really about a writer's really careful positioning of what their project is. As a nonfiction publisher, we want to know not only how a book fits into the market, but really what problem it answers for people. Mm -hmm. And we need to be convinced that that problem is something people are out there seeking a book on. Okay, that... What does this question yeah, stop there. There. What okay, problems this book is going to solve and answer? What right. questions is going to answer? And I will say that, that's and that's also something that goes through all of our marketing. I mean, yeah. it's a really a marketing question. It's who's this for and what's it doing and why? Right. Why are you buying it? And the problem it's solving might be, I need to figure out how to handle my elderly parents, yes. and we published a great book called How to Care for Aging Parents. You know, there's that kind of problem, or... And from the other circle of life, how do you... Right. I'm, I'm pregnant, world, right? what's right. going right. to happen? Right. And we publish what to expect when you're expecting. Yes. But the problem could also be, my kid's struggling in math, and I'm trying to make it interesting and fun, or I don't know how to do their math homework, help, I need something so that I can help them do it. Or the problem might be, Uncle Joe is coming for Christmas. What do I get him? Right. And so we've had actually a lot of success in that niche. Yes, you um, have. The gifty yeah. thing. It's the right. right book for the right time yeah. for the right person. Right, right, right. And maybe it's really about the look and the feel and, ooh, that would be so pretty next to a coffee mug. Yeah. Right. As much as it is about, you know, this content is really hard work right. and problem solving content. So you can define that problem a lot of different ways. Or where are the places I should go before I die? <laughs> you yeah. might ask that yeah. question and well, there's a book to answer Or even that. more importantly, you might be saying, what do I give my niece for graduation yeah, yeah, when right. what she, you know, it's almost that kind of problem rather yes. than, are there 990 places I haven't been yet? Which, right. Yeah, the right. answer is right. yes, but the problem it's solving is really, what do I give someone who loves to travel? See, I don't think writers ask themselves that question it's very often. It's a really important often. question. It's a super important question. It's a really question. important question. We always say when you first come up with an idea, like, a who's, the, who's the audience for the book? Who's and those are tied together. Book? Exactly. Absolutely. Who's going to buy it and why? I mean, we talk a lot about the why to buy. Right. And it has to be clear on, you know, one of the other things that the publisher's job is as we go through that process of designing a cover and designing, you know, what's inside is, are we being clear to our reader why? Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, there may be a beautiful title, but is it really explaining what someone needs in this book? Or is that subtitle working hard enough? Or do we need a first or a quote or a something? We right. frequently, as we're cover designing, leave space for a quote because it's not that we necessarily need that famous person's name on the cover, mm -hmm. though it doesn't hurt. But what we really want is that quote that tells the story that we can't tell in the subtitle. Right. So it's yep. piecing together all those bits of copy that really present the whole story. So it's like, oh, I get what this book is. Like on the cover of our book, yes. it says, for a must-have for every aspiring writer right. from Khaled Hosseini. Yes. Yes. So yes. we have like one of the most well-known fiction writers yes. of our time yes. saying, you as a aspiring writer, writer need writer. this. Yes. It's defining so, the who and, and it, the hey, it's for you. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And exactly. we have a lot of additional copy on the cover yes. of our book, each piece answering yep. this, you know, why yes. why this book needs to be that was on the world. Absolutely. <laughs> it wasn't just cluttered. It wasn't I would happened. say that, that that is a very uniquely workman thing to spend yeah. that amount of time that yeah. on those questions. Yeah. And I think that really came directly from Peter, Peter the Workman, founder Peter. of Peter yeah. Workman, who, yeah. who um, was famous for spending lots and lots of time on <laughs> Listen, they call it the workman magic, but it's not really magic. It's, it's applying certain principles to, to, to the books that you buy and how it you is. put them out into the world. It is. I think, me. you know, one thing that we do differently is there's a big, big group effort on that, which yeah. can be right. painful, but yeah, one of the right. reasons is that someone in that group might catch that fact yeah. and might realize, wait a minute, we're not telling someone it's for an aspiring writer. Yeah. Or, right. Right. So the more brains you get in there, yeah. 
uh, it doesn't make it a quick process, right? right. right. It but it's an effective. important yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So one of the other big questions that we get all the time is why even try to go with the publisher because uh, it takes forever, right. so much rejection, right. maybe they're going to change my manuscript in a way I don't like, like right. one thing after another, or just not having access. Yeah. A lot of people just don't have access. Yeah. 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 And not only that, but some people also have eyeballs themselves. Yes. And so they already have an audience. Yeah. They have readers ready for, ready for their book. Absolutely. Ready for their book. So what, why would you tell someone or maybe not. Right. What What would be right. the de the defining factors? Yeah. I think one of the uh, questions to ask is who is this for, and and how am I going to reach them? Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually think that self publishing has allowed a lot of really important good things to happen. Yeah. And if your book is for a set group, mm -hmm. and you are reaching that set group already. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Or if a book is for your family members, or if a book is a general interest, then you think you can start planting the seeds so that it can grow a little bit from there. Uh, there's nothing wrong with self-publishing. It's a different expectation level. You know, a publisher isn't going to put money behind a book and effort behind a book unless there's a sense that it can sell a certain number. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of self-publishing, if a few hundred or a few thousand copies are sold, everybody feels pretty good. Yes, you know, accomplished. Absolutely. A publisher's expectation is naturally going to be higher because of the resources you put in. So there is that sense that if a publisher is involved, it's going to be taken to a slightly different level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a company like ours, where we do fewer books, we that level's pretty high. We right. really aren't. We don't have enough new titles every year to afford to do things that sell just a few thousand copies. So if we're going to acquire something, there's a bit of a sense that we're going to really work to get to that high level. Right. Right. Uh, and I really think that's the difference. I think a publisher's reach should be beyond what the author is automatically thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and that comes from sales and marketing relationships. Uh, it's really hard for a self-published author to do much more than either get the book out themselves or direct people to Amazon, mm -hmm. where we have relationships with independent bookstores and with gift stores and with Barnes & Noble and with everybody who's out there with potential to sell a book. We also have a lot of business-to-business -business relationships mm -hmm. where we sell to a non-traditional retailer, they may even be buying it as a premium and then giving it to their customers. Right. It's just a way to get the, the sort of field wider, right. a way to put the, more books into more hands. Right. Right. Uh, and we're coming with the experience of this is what we think it should look like and this is what we think the title should be and this is how it fits into the marketplace. And there's a lot of back-end right. metadata and keywords yeah. and right. I, I think that, that could, it's, right. we're learning as we go, but it would be really hard to come in as an author and know how to set that up. And even jobs like I still don't even quite know what a managing editor does, having never worked <laughs> right. in a publishing right. house. Right. There's right. like these these jobs that are are greasing the whole yes. process. Absolutely. That uh, it's very easy for an author who's who's never done this before yeah. to be like, wait, what? Right. You know, right. even just the that ISBN process. Yeah. process sure, alone. absolutely. Yeah. It can yeah. be a difficult. Yeah, one. and we and all the publishers have. Uh, feeds that go out to the world, so when the cover changes and the title changes and the price changes, that's all extremely right. automated. It's not impossible for a self-published person to do, but it's going to be harder right. to understand. Right. Yeah. So we hear all the time that publishers are looking for authors with a platform. Now, do you, when you, I, first of all, what does it mean? And um, when you get a query in, is that, like, do you Google the person and see if they have a website and see if they have all the stuff that the yeah. yeah, platform requires? And it goes beyond a website. And it, it's one of the sort of heartbreaking changes is, because right, we yeah, would love to say, don't worry about it, we'll make you a platform, I know, right? I know. but that's tough. And it's just as tough for the author to make his or her own platform. It is. But it yes, is. of course we do that, and I think that there certainly are publishers who are under instruction, yeah. you know, don't acquire unless there's a platform. Mm -hmm. I think there's been a shift uh, because of the way books are get out in the world yeah. and the digital presence out there where there's, I'd like to think of it more as a partnership and less of the publisher leaning on the author to get the work done, mm -hmm. but everybody has to bring something to the table there. So to take an unknown, an author who doesn't have any connection out there, who's unknown in a marketplace, is just that much more challenging. It really depends what you're trying to say. I mean, again, if it's the gift book for Uncle Joe, if it's a joke book, I, they don't have to be stand-up comedians, that's okay. It could just be a book that's going to sell at retail as an impulse book that's not author-driven. Mm -hmm. But if it's a book that really is 
about the author's expertise. We do need them to be connected and findable and the kind of people we can say, we have this great person you can interview for your website or for your magazine and, and the media out there will say, oh right, we get it because this person's got a lot of followers. Yep. So there's a great imprint within uh, a workman called Algonquin, yes. and they do groundbreaking fiction. Yeah. And I'm curious if, if you, did they have the same, Most mm. many of our people are novelists. Right. Did they also require the same sort of platform uh, that, that oh. nonfiction does? They can answer that so much better than I can. I think it's a little different yeah. uh, with fiction in general. I also think it's harder. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to sell a novel. It's, yeah, and it to is. market a novel. It is. Yeah. You know, it think, is. Let's go back to that question of who's it for, why. Right, right. So when I answer the how to answer that question for a novel, why is, well, I'm looking for something to read at the beach, I'm looking for something to entertain me, I'm looking for something to enrich my life. All the novels do that. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. hard it to be hard. the one that people are talking about and the one that gets found. So, which doesn't mean they're not all you know worthy reads. It's just really right. hard to cut through the noise. Yeah. Uh, so I think an author platform definitely helps. Uh, I do think a, a good fiction publisher can help build that platform. Yeah. By getting them out, getting a speaking engagement, getting a you know sending them out into the world, mm -hmm. but it's challenging. It's harder yeah, it than hard. it is for it's nonfiction, hard, where you've right. got that. Oh, I get why we want to talk Absolutely. about this because it's yes. a trend or it's a topic or it's a problem yeah. that people are having. Right. No, we see we get pitches where we go. Oh yeah, you're going to absolutely get on the view. We can just see it because of the subject matter, because of who the person is. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Every publicist nightmare. I'll just put them on Oprah. Okay. Yeah. Not so easy, but no. yes. But at least you under you can see the yes, yes. Yeah. 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 question. And fiction's much harder. Yeah. 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 Much harder. So, uh, one last question. What advice do you have for writers? Wow. Uh, I think it really is about sort of know how to position what you're doing. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's very important for the writer to be the first advocate for their project in a sense of here's where it fits into the marketplace. Yeah. The first thing that I do when I'm when someone asks me to look at something we're talking about acquiring is I go look at what the comp books are. It's not that hard to find these no. days. At Research. Least Amazon, yes. I, you know, all you really do is type in, I mean, you can start there at least. Type in yes, your topic, totally. type in a similar book, see what other people are buying, see what comes up, see what publishers are advertising against those keywords. Mm -hmm. When that, yeah. when you type in your subject and there's a sponsored ad that comes up, they bought that word yes, because they, they know people right. are searching for it. That's going to start telling you what else is there. And it's really important that you can say, I get who else is out there and here is why my book is different, fits in, breaks the mold, answers the question people aren't answering. Maybe that's about authorship. Maybe it's, you know, here's a book on education, but I'm a kindergarten teacher, so I really know. Or here's a book on family cooking, but my angle is this, which is completely different. Um, and to be able to sort of fit, find your niche and, and explain to the publisher where it is takes a little onus off of us, and then we can go from there without the sort of, it's just a general book, what are we going to do with this? Excellent advice. Thank you so Thank you. much Thank you. for Bye. taking time Bye. out of your busy Monday. <laughs> After BEA. After yeah. BEA. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you at the, See the bookstore. Bookstore. All right. That was awesome. Good. That was so good. That was